Okay, welcome to the meeting. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about uh, something very interesting. What did I say we were going to talk about last night? Skin. Yes. We're going to talk about our external thermometer. And you're going to see just exactly why it's called the external thermometer. Notice we've got a few problems happening here. Anybody know anybody who has these things or have you experienced them yourselves? Well, you're going to see how they take place tonight and what you can do to get rid of them, annihilate them. Is it possible? Absolutely. First of all, here's a principle. By their fruits, ye shall know them. I've taken that principle, of course, and it's talking about the external workings of somebody. You can tell what kind of a person they are. Well, I've discovered over the years, you can tell what kind of health a person has by looking at the externals, what you see outside, because what you see is what you are. Not necessarily what you get, but what you are. <clears throat> so, there's the skin, and it's blown up quite a little bit. Your skin displays your internal condition. So what's happening with your organs inside is actually displayed on your skin outside. If you've got spots, blemishes on your skin outside, that means the internal tissues, liver, stomach, bowels, they've got spots and things happening on them inside. So it is an external thermometer. And not many people understand it very well. Here's a person who has really poor skin. Not the worst I've ever seen, but rel relatively poor. And this person went and did the right diet, the right lifestyle, did a number of things to help the skin regrow. And this is approximately 10 months to a year later. Take a look at the difference. Can the skin be remade? Absolutely. Absolutely. Your skin, you see, many people will put on creams. Skin problems do not occur from the outside in. They occur from the inside out. And there's a lot of money to be made selling topical products to make your skin look good. But if the, the ingredients in the cosmetic pro uh, products are toxic enough, your body will push away what it's trying to get rid of and seal it off so the poison doesn't come in. And so you figure, well, that vanishing cream made everything vanish. <laughs> well, it may, didn't vanish, it just disappeared under the surface down here. Now this is a side view looking right here. This is the basal cell. That's where skin cells are start to be made. It takes 30 to 45 days before these cells actually reach the surface. They go through different changes or alterations on their way to the surface. So it goes through being spinous cells, granular cells, and finally right to the surface we've got what's called the cornified layer or cornified cells. And that's your skin. And you know it's got a little blemish on that one there. And I put it there on purpose so you can see what's going on. What's made down here ends up up here. That is where you need to change your, your approach to looking after your skin. So if we take a look here, I've blown this uh, side view of the skin up. I put this all together. This is the skin, and we're looking at an area this big, but you see it's huge. It's magnified. I've got a blood vessel coming in here, but I want to show you something really interesting. Here's the wrong diet and lifestyle. Right? This guy's drinking the beer, watching the sports instead of playing the sports, eating all the wrong foods, and as a result, he makes really poor blood. And when that poor blood goes into the system, it's going to reach the skin area and it's going to make poor cells and deposit toxic debris from whatever foods he was eating that contained toxic ingredients. And so eventually, it'll form a bump on the skin and sometimes people have those little bumps. I felt them when I'm doing massage therapy sometimes, the little knolls under the skin. And this can form little abrasions, sometimes discolorations, what they call age marks and liver spots and things like this. That's what's happening. It's not happening here, it's happening down here and working its way up to the surface. So you see See, in order to change this, you've got to change this down here. So we're going to work from the basement right to the top level of the attic. Now, you see this cell right here. This cell is a skin cell, but notice it's got a really poor uh, surface. It's got uh, all kinds of holes in it. So this cell cannot hold water, and this kind of cell will produce this kind of skin, blotchy in different areas, the uneven colors, things like that. And by the way, if you have white spots on your skin, that's a sign you're not getting enough sunlight. Yeah, that's what it is. You're not getting enough sunlight on your skin. Your skin needs that sunlight to get rid of the uh, white spots on the skin. Just a sidetrack there. But this, uh, this can be remade, the skin cell. And I'm going to show you how. If you change your diet and lifestyle, and there they are walking on the beach, this would be 
Uh, it's got to be out around BC somewhere on the west coast because we don't have mountains like that out on the east coast, except when you go to the Cabot Trail area. There's some nice areas there in Nova Scotia. But in the meantime, when you change the ingredients which make your blood, that blood becomes healthy and these th the substances that are near the surface of the skin become dissolved. But notice how they're disappearing from the bottom up toward the top. So when you start doing everything right, don't be disheartened if you say, well, it's just not changing fast enough. I don't see any change in my skin. I guarantee you something is happening below the surface. Things that you might not even know of sometimes. But it'll clear that all up and you get back to normal skin again sooner or later. And as we take a look at that skin again, notice this. You're going to see a small change bit by bit take place in this cell as the materials are being remade. And now the cell has a complete structure. And this cell can now hold water. The previous condition of that cell, it could not hold water. And in order for the cells to operate 100%, they have to have enough water in the system. And if you look at our DVD on the uh, ancient elixir rediscovered, then you'll find out that, boy, what kind of water should I be drinking and how much should I be drinking? So I refer back to that one rather than me sidetracking right now. But watch this hand because this is the same hand doing the right dietary changes. Look what happens. That's built from underneath right up. And as I go through this presentation, I hope some lights are going to click on in your brain. And you're going to say, wait a minute, I know how to rebuild my skin. And you're going to see how important your skin actually is. So, in the Bible it says this, it's in the book of Leviticus chapter 17. It says, for it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Down here it says, for the life of all flesh is in the blood. So I highlighted that, and it's very significant because that is exactly true. Your life is not found in what you eat. Your life is found in the blood. That's the life of all flesh. So in, it's, it's fantastic some of the things they've been able to discover now. At the McMaster University in Hamilton, they had a recent groundbreaking study. It is now possible to convert skin to blood without returning said skin to a stem cell state. The study took place at McMaster University, Hamilton, Ontario. So isn't that rather fascinating that skin can be made into blood, the skin stem cells? Stem cells are what your body uses to make every single organ and system in your, in your whole body. So when the skin stem cells, they can be used for many different things because it's basically a stem cell. So take a look at this. Fascinating information here. The importance of healthy skin. Here we are, female skin, male skin. We have two different types of skin, men and women. The skin of a woman is much finer. It is a much softer skin. It can be damaged a lot easier. And so what you want to look at is the two types of skin can have really beautiful skin. The two types of, uh, of genders have beautiful skin. So I want to show you a picture. What kind of skin do you think this is? What kind of skin cell? You probably can't even guess, can you? That is a skin stem cell. That's what it looks like. Now, I'm going to play games with you here. What does this one look like? Anybody guess? That's kind of pretty, isn't it? Isn't that nice colors? Look at the purple and the green. and they're Oh, beautiful. But it's not so beautiful for most people because that's a fat cell. <laughs> pretty in color, but not so pretty when you start getting too many of them, right? What about this one? Can you guess what this one might be? What? A muscle? a muscle? No, that's a hair cell. Yeah, that's a hair cell. What about this one? Kind of pretty, isn't it? Is it a fat cell? No, we've already done a fat cell, haven't we? That's a retina cell from your eye. Watch this one. Give you a clue. Look at all the different tributaries running off this, all the little endings running off it. What do you think that would be? You're, you're close. You're close. You're in the right church, just the wrong pew. That is a nerve cell. That's a nerve cell. And of course, your brain is, is all nerves, right? But the interesting thing is, all of those cells were made from skin stem cells. Now, if your body is really unhealthy, oftentimes it will utilize skin stem cells to reproduce cells that you're unable to, to make because you're not giving it the right foods and living the right life. So your skin starts to become really drawn, tight, discolored, marked. 
And people wonder why. Oh, it's just age. No, it's not age. Your skin should look healthy at any age. Any age at all. But there's a real clue, a real uh, good reason to be eating right and living right. And from what you learned last night, thinking right. Very, very important. So let's turn the picture here. This is a real close-up of skin pores. The pores of the skin right here. And I want to show you this pore on the top. Here's what it looks like. You can see little crustaceans. This one's got a lot of dead skin around it. You've all got these on your body, right? You may say, I look like an aardvark or something. You know, no, but they're really miniature. And I've done a lot of microscopy on skin. It's fantastic to take a piece of skin or just a chunk and just look at it and see what's happening. Magnified a thousand times or five thousand times. Wow, it's really incredible. Now this one over here, this is on the side, but it's open. And you see there's not a lot of crustacean around this one like there is on this one. Both cells are very important, but what do you notice they look like? Little mouths. There's little holes in your skin. And these holes go inside, like a cave, inside your body. So whatever you put on your skin, it's going to go in there. So don't put anything on your skin that you can't eat because it's gonna go into your blood. Now, fascinating statement here from a, from a very, very uh, influential book. It's uh, Christian Temperance and Bible Hygiene written in the late 1800s. Look at this. The little mouths in the skin through which the body breathes can become clogged, thus making it impossible to eliminate impurities through that channel. This throws a double burden upon the other excretory organs and disease is soon produced. I think there's a lot of wisdom back then. You know, knew there was little mouths in the skin, pores through which the skin breathes. Your nervous system receives most of its oxygen from your skin. And if your skin is not breathing properly, if it's not clean, your nervous system is going to become deteriorated. Remember that uh, young woman that was in the James Bond movie, Goldfinger? Well, the first girl they had all painted gold, they had to take her to hospital. She almost died because her skin was covered. It couldn't breathe. And the next girl they used, they put about a dollar size hole uh, where they didn't paint the gold at the lower end of her spine. And she lasted about two hours. And then the, whew, she started to have the same effect. So they had to clean her all up. But that shows you the importance of your skin breathing and how important it is. <clears throat> also, the studied habit of shunning the air and avoiding exercise closes the pores, the little mouths through which the body breathes, making it impossible to throw off impurities through that channel. So your skin is used to throw off impurities from your system. One thirtieth of all the carbon dioxide that your body gives off goes through your skin. One thirtieth of all the oxygen your body breathes comes through your skin. That's interesting, isn't it? So the burden of the labor is thrown upon the liver, lungs, kidneys, etc., and these internal organs are compelled to do the work of the skin. So whenever one member of the body is not working right, other members have to make, take up the slack. And this is something the body was never designed to do. Everybody should be doing their part. And so when you got bad skin, it's a sign everybody's not working, especially the tongue. And the tongue says, I like the taste of that. <laughs> and the body says, no, no. And the tongue says, yes, yes. Of course, and the nose, of course, gets involved in it. You see, you've got a body, and inside your body, you're, you're equipped with, with five senses. Your brain is the adult, and your five senses are five rebellious children. And so your brain has to tell these children what they can do and what they cannot do. But in most cases, the five senses control the house. Have you ever had a household where the children are ruling? Do you find chaos or do you find organization? You find chaos, right? So it's got to rule with the brain. <clears throat> also, she said this, to become acquainted with the wonderful human organism, the bones, muscles, stomach, liver, bowels, heart, and pores of the skin, imagine that, become acquainted with them. That's what you're doing here. And to understand the dependence of one organ upon another for the healthful action of all, is a study in which most mothers take no interest. And you know why mothers take no interest? Because they do not know the importance of the skin, of the whole body. 
Those who are not in health have impurities in the blood and the skin is not in a healthy condition. Remember what I was saying to you last night? I said, I can tell a lot of people's health just by seeing their skin when they come in the office. It shows on the skin. The multitude of pores or little mouths through which the body breathes become clogged and filled with waste matter. The skin needs to be carefully and thoroughly cleansed that the pores may do their work in freeing the body from impurities. Therefore, feeble persons who are diseased surely need the advantages and blessings of bathing. They look like they're having fun there, right? He's washing her hair, but you get the idea, right? It should be a wonderful thing to do, bathing. But you notice uh, I've got some products here, right? And you're going to see what's good and what's not so good from these. Once again, there are the pores, but the best way to clean your skin is dry skin brushing. Dry skin brushing, not soap, not water, dry skin brushing. If you want to dry skin brush, it's best to dry skin brush before you exercise in the morning. Because when you exercise, the skin becomes what? Wet, moist. And that skin then is not going to rub off so easy. The dead skin will become more attached to the, to the skin that's your living skin and it won't get it off. So do your dry skin brushing before you exercise. And then when you're exercising, your skin will breathe a whole lot better. And I'm going to show you some of the interesting things that, uh, that you can do with dry skin brushing and other materials too as well. You see right in through here, there's a hole right there in the, in the skin layer right there. And that is going to become an expressed object in which I'm going to show you a lesson. There's the pore right there. But notice this now, it's covered with dead skin. Enter the dry skin brush. And guess what we're going to do? You're going to see what happens. One by one, as you brush over, these things flake off. And then the pore becomes open. And it's breathable. Everything's working. Now the little mouth can breathe. And this builds up. You know, most house dust, about, I think it's about 80% of house dust is made up of human skin. <laughs> it just, it comes off, it comes off. If you're dry skin brushing, it's really interesting if you go to where you've got some sunlight coming in through a window. And just take your arm and just brush and you'll see a whole bunch of, of dust coming down. That's dead skin. And you don't want to have that sitting on your body at all. So here we have a person who's going to use soap. We've got the dry, the dry skin uh, dead pieces on the, on the left there, and on the right we've got some more dead skin, but take a look at what happens when you put soap over it. It creates a film through which the dead skin cannot slough off like it can over here. So... Why should you use soap? We think we need soap to make things clean. Have you ever noticed if you use soap and you get out of the shower and you're dry, you, you feel tight? That's because you've covered your skin with almost an invisible layer of material that prevents the cells from breathing until that soap gets, devolved, gets dissolved a little bit. So I never use soap. It's dry skin brushing. When I get in the shower, there's other things that you can do. So a brush for the face. Very important, the skin on your face is much softer and finer than the skin on the rest of your body. You have different skin, types of skin all over your body, but for the face, use a special skin brush, a complexion brush. We sell these at our store in Bay St. Anne. I'm not telling you you have to order them, but, but we've got everything you need for health right there in the store. And it's amazing all the neat products there are to help you have a better, healthier life. So this brush looks like this on the bottom. It was top view, but it's only about this big, kind of small. Nice to use for your face. And I say, look for that brand, Bernard Jensen brushes, because I know they're made well, and they use vegetable bristles in them, vegetable fiber bristles, not animal hair or plastic or anything. And these bristles wear very nicely and have no side effects on the body. Don't cut the skin. And it feels really hard when you first do it. <laughs> you know, ooh, I'm tearing my skin. But no, after three days, you'll notice your skin is softer and smoother and healthier looking because you're going to draw blood to the surface that maybe never reached there before. So upon rising in the morning, most persons would be benefited by taking a sponge or a hand bath. This will remove all impurities from the skin and keep it moist and supple, thereby aiding the circulation. Very important. Notice a, a sponge or a hand bath. Putting the water on and wiping it off and putting it on and wiping it off so the skin is cleaning the skin. It's rather interesting. She didn't say to use soap, did she? Okay. Now, in the, in the shower, 
use a loofah sponge and you scrub your skin towards your heart from all areas of the body, toward the heart, from the head down, from the arms up, always toward the heart. And what this does is it really uh, makes your lymphatic system start to work well. And you need your lymphatic system stimulated because that's your immune system. When you get out of the shower, it's really good if you, well, I'm going to tell you to do this. Nice warm shower and you use your loofah sponge and have the shower just as hot as you can stand it. And then when you're finished doing the loofah sponge, you reach bravely in and turn off the hot water and just let the cold water hit you. Whoa, you don't even need a coffee after that. You're just you're wide awake. I'm ready to go, right? But this further ex exaggerates the movements of the lymphatic system. And I do this every day, so <laughs> it won't kill you, right? It's really good. And when you get out of the shower, take your hand right against your breastbone right here and tap it double strokes 30 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that, 30 times. And this will super activate your immune system nicely, causing T cells and B cells and all kinds of cells to enter into your system. And it's really good for you to do these things. Okay? Scrupulous cleanliness is essential to both physical and mental health. Impurities are constantly thrown off from the body through the skin. Its millions of pores are quickly clogged unless kept clean by frequent bathing. And the impurities which should pass off through the skin become an additional burden to the other eliminating organs. That is important to know. So you have to know a reason why we say, do these things, do this, do that. It's for your benefit. And this helps your brain. It helps every single organ in your body. Now, it doesn't matter what uh, uh, nationality you may be. It doesn't matter at all. Healthy skin is available to anybody from any race, any gender, at any age. You can have healthy skin. You know, I remember seeing a man once, we were talking in, in, the, in Penticton, British Columbia, and uh, this man, uh, I was introduced to him, and I thought he was around maybe 50. Found out afterward he was about 75. And this man, he was a raw fooder for 25 years, and he just looked radiant, you know, just amazing uh, what, what it can do. But looking after the skin, is a it, it, it's a result of what's happening inside, you're going to see. So, what is the skin actually composed of? Now, this is interesting. I love this stuff. What is this? Can anybody tell me? What is that? This is part of the skin, but can you tell me what it is? No. It's elastin. Elastin. Elastin is a protein in connective tissue that is elastic and allows many tissues in the body to resume their shape after stretching or contracting. Elastin helps skin to return to its original position when it is poked or pinched. Now you'll notice some people have saggy skin. That's because the diet and lifestyle are saggy. And that's what's producing saggy skin. So we need to do something different to activate the skin. Activate it. There's another substance now. There's three substances necessary for you to make really nice skin. Really healthy, nice skin. Here's another one. Looks like a web kind of, doesn't it? Like you get a fishing net. You get caught in. There's red blood cells in that right there. That is fibrin. And fibrin is a long and soluble protein produced from the blood protein fibrinogen. Platelets in the blood release chemicals which affect this conversion when they come across an injury in the vessel wall. I want you to remember that. The key operative word here is injury. When there's an injury in the, in the skin, this has to be made. Has to be made. The next one is not familiar to you. Almost looks like a, a mask you'd wear, right? That is collagen. Collagen is mostly found in fibrous tissues such as tendon, ligament, and skin and is also abundant in cornea, cartilage, bone, blood vessels, the gut, and intervertebral disc. The fibroblast is the most common cell which creates collagen. Collagen is necessary to rebuild your whole system. You need lots of collagen if you're going to rebuild your skin and make it healthy. And I want to share with you a little secret not many people know about. It. 
If you want to rebuild your skin, you need lots of collagen. You want to have yourself between 5,000 to 10,000 milligrams of vitamin C daily in the form of calcium ascorbate or magnesium ascorbate. This is really effectual because it causes your body to produce eight times more collagen than it would without the vitamin C. And the collagen is necessary to get your skin up and going. So if you want to build your skin, you've got to give your body extra nutrients. And you're going to see why that is. Very important. These are human fibroblast cells. A fibroblast is a type of cell that synthesizes the extracellular matrix and collagen and plays a critical role in wound healing. Remember that wound, the idea of bruising, of hurting, of cutting, of injuring the skin? Fibroblasts are the most common cells of connective tissue in animals. So it is important that you understand this concept. Very, very important. They play a critical role in wound healing. And without a wound, you're not going to rebuild skin. If you've got a really good massage therapist who knows their stuff and knows the skin, then they can help you rebuild elastin, fibrin, and collagen. And thus, the human fibroblast cells also. But proper skin massage stretches the skin and provides small breaks in the elastin network. This causes the blood to produce more fibrin to build up the collagen and elastin in the massaged area. This, in turn, gives a younger, smoother look to the skin. So when the skin is being massaged, if the massage therapist knows what they're doing, they can just provide wonderful little breaks in the skin without hurting you. It won't feel like it's hurting. It just feels really, really good. And the skin in certain areas, like if, if you get a massage therapist, and they'll massage your face also. Very important. And the soles of your feet very important. And your hands and your fingers all need to be massaged. And then your skin will start to really feel good. To get the true effect, you'd have to have a massage if you wanted to go at it really hardcore about every second day for a good three months. And eating the right diet and you'll see all the other things you need to do. And you will see such a change in your skin. And then after it's all healed, it takes very little to keep it that way if you stay on the straight and narrow path. Very little. So in the human body, before your skin can get what it needs to be healthy, you have to have more than enough nutrition to take care of your internal organs. You need super extra amounts of nutrition. And that is because the nutrition first has to feed the internal organs before there'll be any left to feed the skin. So the internal organs come first and then the skin is last. It's like when you make a vegetable garden and you have deer or other animals in the area, you have to make enough for everybody. Otherwise, you're not going to have any yourself. And most of the dietary regime that North Americans go through, they're not putting in enough nutrition to rebuild the skin, let alone rebuild the internal organs. So it's a, it's a catastrophe is what's taking place. Is any of this making sense to you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. I'm glad. I like to check from time to time to make sure I'm not giving you something that you don't understand because if you don't understand it, I've wasted my time and your time. Right? Now these are some of the ways you can rebuild your skin. Foods and supplements. You don't need to wrap yourself like this wonderful girl did here with the greens. But the idea is you do it from the inside out, not the outside in, right? Okay, let's take a close look here. This is an incredible food. These are nice organic apricots. Apricots maintain and improve a youthful look to the skin and regenerate fluids throughout the body. Remember the cell that couldn't hold water with the holes in it? Apricots help the cells to hold water, hold moisture. That doesn't mean you become plump. It means you become healthy with your cells holding the right amount of nutrition. Dried apricots enable every cellular structure in your body to hold proper amounts of moisture to maintain normal cellular function. So, we also sell those at our store too. <laughs> Everything there that people need. So when they come for blood work and I put them on a program, they say, where can I get these things? I say, just walk out the door right there and in there. And they go and they look. And the reason why we got all these things in the store is because of this. In our area, we don't have a health food store like you have here, that one that's called Nature's Way. Nature's Fair, pardon me. Nature's Fair. That is a great place. Jeannie and I have been there two days in a row now where they're getting a, you know, a whole quart of green juice. And just <laughs> it's fantastic. And all the foods they've got in there, all the organic produce. Wasn't that nice? Oh, boy, I had a big green kale drink today. 
Fantastic. And that stuff's good for your skin, I'll tell you. So we'll be in there visiting them every day. Hey, here, here they come again. We're making your drink for you, you know. <laughs> that should be the way with everybody. Places like that need to be well, well attended. Do you know that? Because they've got something to offer you that other places haven't. They're putting life within your grasp. So support these places. And you know, when you say, well, the prices are kind of high, how much would you invest in your health? And you're supporting local farmers. The more you support these stores, the lower the prices become, right? So keep that in mind. And your health is worth it. People will spend money on an automobile, on a house, and these things will rot. They'll go, you know. But your body, that's what you have with, with which you enjoy everything. So you got to keep that in mind. Make a good priority list. Now, nuts, nuts are fantastic. Nuts are a real good source of fats for your skin. And does your skin need fat? It sure does, but it needs healthy fats. So a handful a day, and make sure you get a good variety. Don't always stick to the same old, same old. My wife tries to get me to, to eat different things all the time, and I have a pretty good variety, I think, which is, why don't you try this and try this and try this? She loves trying all kinds of different things, but I kind of get set in a pattern of certain different things, and that's the way I go. But from time to time, do I not do it? I ate seaweed today, didn't I? Yeah, and I liked it. It was pretty good, but I don't normally like seaweed, even though it grows abundantly where we live. <laughs> we'll be walking along the beach and, and you know, say, look at all this seaweed. <laughs> Collect it all and let it compost and then put it in the garden. Fantastic nutrients. Very, very good. And it's all, it doesn't cost us anything where we live. Wow, it's so nice. We're blessed. Now, berries. Key thing in you having good food for your skin because all berries are rich sources of antioxidants which repair the skin helps slow down the aging process, that's good, and prevent skin damage. Antioxidants are a key valuable tool in you recovering your skin. And so many people, they've got uh, uh, things like stretch marks, and they figure the skin is not stretching properly, and that's what caused the stretch mark. Wrong. Stretch marks are caused from an imbalance in the hormonal system of your body. You'll notice skinny people can get stretch marks. And I've seen them on skinny people, stretch marks. It's because there's an imbalance in the hormonal structure. And a good way to rebalance it is get rid of all animal products, go to a mostly 80% raw food diet, lots of juices, lots of antioxidants and supplements, and start taking things like maca, M-A-C-A. Maca rebalances all the hormonal system, the endocrine system in your body, rebalances it. And then I'm going to show you some things you can do to remove, dissolve, get rid of the stretch marks. Sound good? And that'll mean the body will rebuild them and rebuild the skin new and the stretch marks will disappear. And all the, anybody who has um, any problems with uh, cellulite, cellulite is not a fat problem. Cellulite is a circulation problem. When the ve blood vessels start to collapse around the tissues, the fat cells are all that remains and the skin shrinks according to the blood vessels that are shrinking from the skin. Ah, so increasing circulation gets rid of what? Cellulite. It's, it's that simple. But yet, they've got all these operations and liposuction and all this. No, God's way is the easy way. Can we be forgiven for sin? Absolutely. Can the skin forgive us and rebuild itself? It rebuilds itself every day. The key is, what are you feeding your skin so it's rebuilt perfectly? What are you doing? Well, I'll show you some interesting things again here. This is, again, a food that is fantastic. These are goji berries. You've heard of the goji berries, right? Goji berries are an incredible food because they're rich in essential amino acids, are very high in skin-protecting antioxidants, aid muscle regeneration, and improve digestion, which, again, aids your skin. But what I like to have with my goji berries is cacao. And I'm not stuttering. It's cacao. Cacao nibs, nice organic, or you can get the raw Picari chocolate, 100%. You know, it's very bitter, but <laughs> it's really good. And if I mix it with goji berries, the taste is incredible. Because the goji berries have the sweetness, and then I've got the nice cacao chocolatey flavor, and it's actually good for you. Would you enjoy that? Oh, it's excellent. Cacao is the highest antioxidant food known to man. It contains tryptophan and serotonin, which greatly enhances brain function. So you're getting a one-two whammy with those kind of foods. And if you had that a couple or three times a week with your breakfast, 
and had a nice amount of it, you'd be doing yourself a whole lot of favors. And how much should you be eating? If you take a look at the DVD that we've done, it's called How to Avoid Tunnel Eating. Jeannie explains on there how much food you can actually put in your stomach and have your stomach do a good amount of proper digestion. And that's important to know too. So all of the DVDs have information on them that's, that's going to give you health. And if you follow the principles, you know, I can say, you'll be blessed. It's that simple. So moving on, we've got some things like vegetable fruit juice mixes. These are delicious. This looks like what we get there at, the, at nature's... Um, Fair. <laughs> Keep forgetting fair because we got a nature's gate, we got nature's way, and now it's nature's fair. I got to log that one, right? So, okay. But we find things like 50% fresh squeezed orange juice mixed with 50% fresh squeezed carrot juice. Wow. Have it mid morning, have it mid afternoon. An 8 ounce glass or a 16 ounce glass, whatever you want to do. This is going to start flooding your body with the extra nutrition it needs to give the organs what they need and have enough left over to feed your skin and start doing some repair work. And you can also do 50% beet juice with 50% apple juice. I've had ladies come into the office and say, I'm addicted to that stuff. I love it. And it's so good for you. When you know what it's doing for you, it makes it that much more attractive, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, exactly. Okay, so you can try different combinations, but don't mix too much fruit juice. Fruits are cleansing, but Vegetables are more rebuilding than cleansing. So if you're going to go one way over the other, add more vegetable juice than you would fruit juice. Say 75% vegetable, 25% fruit. Don't go the other way. We have this tendency to want something sweeter and make it taste the way we'd like. You've got new taste buds every two weeks on your tongue. And if you, you keep persisting in drinking certain drinks, all of a sudden they're going to seem very tasty to you. You'll actually like them. I was that way with tofu. Couldn't stand it at first because I was a burger kind of guy, you know. <laughs> tofu, whoa. But after a number of weeks, I began to get used to this stuff and actually I began craving it. Now I just take it out of the package and just eat it, you know. <laughs> and I like it. So we can, if we can get used to alcohol and tobacco, we can get used to eating good food, right? Because <laughs> I remember the first time taking a drag off a cigarette. <laughs> whoa, I got so dizzy. and Then I wanted to do it again. Duh, you know. <laughs> and we get used to the rotten taste and so on and so forth. Get used to the good food good for you. So, super antioxidants. Great stuff to add to your arsenal of skin-building products. And these are fantastic because getting plenty of antioxidants not only repairs the skin, but also feeds and protects the brain from free radical damage and slows the aging process. Remember last night how I shared with you about free radicals? and what they do in the system, well, you want to provide lots of antioxidants so you avoid the free radicals. And this provides your body with great healing potential. Also, vitamin D3. These are 5,000 IU capsules. And I would recommend 10,000 international units a day. I say, oh, that much? You know, if you're out in the sunlight for 15 minutes, you've got 10,000 IU of vitamin D3 in your body. And they say, oh, don't take too much. In the time of the year when you don't have enough sunlight, start supplementing. You need this stuff, especially in the northern hemisphere. We don't get a whole lot. But watch the DVD on radiation you can't live without. Jean does a great presentation on that. She explains all about the D3 and all what's going on with sunlight and the big facade of stay out of the sun. Oh, I can't believe it sometimes. When God says the sun is good for us, I believe God. And it's true. So vitamin D not only helps the bones to build healthy blood, which is good for your skin, it also helps to strengthen the immune system and lift the spirits during winter months. So get nice bright lighting, full spectrum lighting, and take your vitamin D3, and you'll be good over the winter months. Now, poor person, they've got some terrible skin there, but this is what a, a one interesting book called Counsels to Parents, Teachers, and Students, page 298 says, that which darkens the skin and makes it dingy also clouds the spirits and destroys cheerfulness and peace of mind. Every habit that injures the health reacts upon the mind. I've had people in the office that have had really poor skin and guess what they, they feel? They, always, they don't want people to look at them. and it, they, it really affects people in an adverse way. And so getting your skin healthy, all of a sudden you feel like you want to look at people. And they'll go, boy, you look different. You, know, you, you look really healthy. You know, what, what are you doing? Right? And that's your chance to share with them what you're doing. But if they don't ask you, don't go and tell them. Hey, guess what I'm doing? You know? <laughs> don't, 
do that. <laughs> Wait till they ask you, and then you know you have something to share with them. <clears throat> also from the book Healthful Living, many are ignorantly injuring their health and endangering their lives by using cosmetics. When they become heated, the poison is absorbed by the pores of the skin and is thrown into the blood. Many lives have been sacrificed by this means alone. And you know, a lot of cosmetic pro uh, products, people don't ask what's in it. This is my skin color, and they put it on, and the eyeshadows and things like that. You can use those things, but you want to get things that contain natural ingredients that won't hurt your skin. And you can put these on while you're waiting for your skin to become the type of skin that doesn't need cosmetics, right? And there are, that does happen. You know, I, I was with the, um, uh, when I was taking massage therapy down in the Palm Springs area, uh, I, I worked with a woman who was the, uh, a young woman who was the daughter of a geisha girl in Japan. And um, her skin was just so perfect. And I said, how do they get their skin like that? This is many, many years ago. And she said, well, they have colon hydrotherapy once a week. It means cleaning the bowel all out. And they're a strictly vegan vegetarian diet. Isn't that interesting? And when this young woman was doing massage on me, she didn't even know what my diet and lifestyle was like, but she said, you're a vegan vegetarian. And I said, yes. And she said, mostly raw food too. I said, yes, how do you know that? She says, by the smell of your skin. By the smell of your skin. So what you're eating is oozing out of the pores. She said her mother could blindfolded walk into a room, walk by people and say, this one's from North America, this one's Asian, this one, you know, because she said the North Americans smell like dead animals. Their skin, it's coming out, it's a lot of animal products, right? And she said, but an Asian person has a lot of dietary fiber, good meat, you know, and that's how she knew. But I never knew that before, but now I smell skin. I can smell people when they come into the office and I can almost tell you the diet. I had one man, his favorite meal was pork and I could tell it was pork. <laughs> it was just right there. But you know, we become blind to the smell and we don't smell it on ourselves. But it's all going to come through your pores because your body is part of your eliminative system. So now, <clears throat> here's some shampoo. Now, I'm not promoting Olivier products because I get a, a cut from them. I don't. This is a company that, that has its offices in, in New Brunswick, and they hand make everything. And you can eat their shampoo, and you can eat their soap, and you can eat all their skin products because they want to make them so that you can put them on the skin, it's going to be healthy to the body. So I recommend Olivier products. You want a good shampoo, they got good shampoos, pretty good conditioners, but they'll do you the world of good. When you're shampooing your hair, I shampoo my hair once a week and my hair is not greasy or oily. Now this is really interesting because before when I used to wash my hair every day, sometimes twice a day, it used to get really oily. You know why that is? Because when you put the shampoo on, it strips away oil, and your body makes more oil to take the place of that oil because it needs the oil on there. And now I dry skin brush my hair and I shampoo it once a week and it stays just fine. Notice animals in the wilderness, they don't have greasy fur. They don't shampoo all the time. And everybody wants the pelts, you know. <laughs> They're so nice because the body's well-oiled, the skin is looked after, and the hair is, is fine. So try those things, you know. It really works. It's true. And they also have uh, different lotions you can put on your skin, and again, you can eat them. So just, just knock it up on the web somewhere, like Olivier products, and you'll see the shampoos, the different skin creams. They've got day cream for your skin that actually feeds your skin. It's very good for you, and you can eat all their products. Jeannie and I went to the plant. We were, had a tour of the plant. We <laughs> get a lot of stuff from there. But <laughs> they were eating the soap and everything, you know. It was incredible. And I, I, I saw that. That is a good product. Remember what I said? Don't put it on your skin unless you can put it in your mouth. And that, that's a key right there. So also, let's take a look at uh, external skin repair. Notice I said repair. Why would I say repair? Because we're going to damage it. Glad you're sitting down. You see this? Oh, you wouldn't want that actual size rolling over your body, would you? But <laughs> this comes in a form, very small little needles, about 0.25 millimeters, these little needles. You rub them over your skin and they puncture the skin, little needles going down through. And what happens to that is that the skin becomes damaged. Now, remember what I told you? The body starts to put in col the collagen. It starts to put in the fibrin and the elastin when the skin is what? 
damaged. So this causes mild, mild damage to the surface of the skin, no bleeding or anything. So the body moves in and says, we've got to rebuild this. When you're putting this over a scar area, it's going to restructure the scar area, damage, so the body starts to rebuild and repair the scar. Isn't that rather interesting? And I've seen some incredible things take place with a derma roller. You can get this at Amazon.com. They're not expensive, maybe between 30, 30 to $50, somewhere around there, and it'll last you a lifetime. When you use it, you finish using it, you, you just go a lot of different directions on your face, and it feels very sharp. <laughs> you can get them up to, to 2.5 millimeters, and don't use anything but a 0.25 on your face. But you can go up to 2.5 millimeters on your legs or somewhere like that, but I'll tell you, it's sharp needles. So <laughs> depends on how much you want to rebuild your skin, right? And now I'm going to show you some things to put on the skin when you do rebuild it. Like vitamin E, 28,000 IU. After you've done a derma roller, rub this into your skin. It's going to start to feed your skin from the outside in, and then you're drinking all the juices, you're hitting it from the inside out. So it's a one-two whammy that's going to do wonders for your skin. It's incredible, and you'll rebuild it a whole lot faster. Does it sound painful? It's actually not painful. It'll feel a little warm on your skin, but your skin is going to become tighter, more resilient. Marks are going to disappear, especially the way you're feeding it. Ladies, you're going to look younger. I'm sorry, but that's one of the side effects, okay? <laughs> and when you trim down, you have to go buy new clothes. That's a hard thing for a woman to do. I realize that, but that's what takes place. So you'll look younger. You're, you'll make your husband jealous. And maybe if the husband gets his skin going also, and they should, then... That's a one-two women. So what a handsome couple. Yeah, How, boy, they, they look about, oh, about 50. Well, they're 90. <laughs> yeah. And still going strong, right? So 28,000 IU, but also you can use grapeseed oil. Get stuff that's meant for your skin. Grapeseed oil is good for your skin. It's high antioxidants. And things like dermophytum, little, little pearls that you can get to put on your skin. And you rub these on after doing the derma roller very important and you could do that about every second to third day because you give your skin time to repair don't keep doing it every day every second to third day and you'll see some changes in your skin marvelous changes crow's feet around your eyes and laugh lines and things start to disappear you look younger your circulation's improved your health is improved significantly and your mental attitude becomes improved why you've discovered a fountain of youth right you live longer and you look younger. And there's nothing wrong with that. Here is, a, 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 this is absolutely incredible. You've heard of frankincense, right? Did you know that frankincense, if you take frankincense and you put it on your skin, if you put it on your skin, it does a wonder work like you wouldn't believe. Get high quality frankincense oil because here's what can happen. It prevents and reduces wrinkles frankincense oil. You can take it inside too, internally you can take frankincense. But make sure it's 100% frankincense from a very good high quality uh, company. Also, it removes warts. Apply three times daily until gone. Frankincense, beautiful. And I'm glad you're sitting down, the good stuff's to come. Remove sunspots on the skin when applied undiluted. So take it right out of the bottle, rub it on the sunspots. Derma roller, rub it on, get it in. Watch the sunspots disappear. Are you learning anything new? It's interesting, isn't it? The skin is a marvelous organ, and it is an organ. It's the largest organ in your body. Largest organ. Wow. So, it helps repair stretch marks and promotes new cell growth. Frankincense. Who would have thought of it, right? So, you derma roller those stretch marks, and a lot of ladies, they'll get stretch marks on the breast tissue and on the hip area. Roller them away put on the frankincense oil and get ready for some results. But remember, 30 to 45 days before the new cells start to come up. So you've got to put a mega dose of nutrition inside and keep working at yourself outside and take pictures before and after of the different areas and you will see a difference yourself. You may not notice it day by day, but I'll tell you, when you separate those pictures over, say, a six-week period, you notice a difference. And, you and if you start feeling good about yourself, Life becomes much more enjoyable, doesn't it? That's so true. Now, <clears throat> this is uh, um, something else you can put in your skin. How many have heard of Satcha Inchi Oil? You ever heard of that? Oh, some people have. Powerful stuff. 54% omega-3. 
Great for your skin, great for your brain. So uh, it can be applied topically as well as taken internally. I love this on salad. I love this on bread. It tastes fantastic. My wife doesn't like it, but I love it. Maybe if she kept at it long enough, she'd begin to develop a taste for it. Next time you try to tell me to try something new, I'll say, here, you try this. <laughs> you do this, I'll trade you. <laughs> also, virgin, extra, or virgin coconut oil. Coconut oil can be applied directly on the skin to provide healthful fats that keep the skin smooth and healthy. But don't take too much inside because it is a saturated fat. Saturated fat. Silica complex, you can buy a supplement for that. Silica, that's very good for building your skin because silica is necessary for healthy skin and bone regeneration by producing a matrix for calcium and magnesium deposits. And you can also get this from apples, raisins, cucumbers, and strawberries. So get lots of those, juice them up, and get your natural silica complex from the foods. But if you can buy supplements, you're that much more ahead. You know, you can, you can do yourself some really good favors that way. Skin again, here it is. Well, take a look at this internal organ. All of these organs inside, there is the transverse colon, one of the most important parts of your digestive system. Waste material from all over the body is deposited in the transverse colon. The foods come up through the, uh, through the ascending colon, but all the toxins are left to sit in the transverse colon. And uh, for perfectly healthy skin, Keep your bowels and tissues clean. And so once those poisons are sitting there, if they sit there too long, if the colon's not moving properly, then it starts to prolapse and go down, 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 and your bowel movements start to disappear. They're non-existent in some people. We've had people that have bowel movement once a month. Imagine that. And the transverse colon, of course, is very prolapsed, full of toxins. That's why high fiber and keeping your colon clean is very important to good skin. Remember I told you about the geisha girl in Japan? Once a week, colon hydrotherapy to keep their bowels clean and their skin was like porcelain. So keeping your skin clean, very important. Teenagers that get all the acne, guess what they have as a problem? Bowel problems. And you figure acne is just part of being a teenager. No, it's not. It's part of being unhealthy. That's what it is. So I recommend a couple of products for you. And again, we don't make any money from these products, but I found them to be very, very good. So FiberFi, good for gently cleaning the colon, keeping it clean. And also Cleansify, same company. That cleanses all the different internal organs, lungs and liver and pancreas and all of these organs. So you want to keep your body clean while you're rebuilding your skin because if it's not being kept clean, then those toxins go to the skin again and you're going to take a longer time to rebuild your skin than you would if you kept the internal organs nice and clean. That makes sense to you? Oh, good. Oh, <laughs> Now, our external thermometer. Here it is. You have learned today a number of things I'm just going to review quickly for you. The, that the skin affects the whole body. Have you understood that? Yes. You've seen why it affects the whole body, right? Also, you learned that the skin reveals the state of health or lack of health. And how unhealthy skin is made. You saw how that happens. Put the food in, blood goes up to the skin unhealthy skin. You saw how diet affects the skin. You learn how skin is used to make blood. You've seen how the skin helps repair tissues. You've seen the skin breathes and how to clean the skin as well as how to feed the skin. So bottom line, perfectly healthy skin requires a well-nourished, active, and thoroughly clean body, both inside and out. Hope you enjoyed that lecture.